the reason we got into this, uh, I belong to another club where we've had uh, lots of ups and downs with various repeaters and conversations about who can you know, communicate with whom without a repeater and so on. And Google Earth will give you some insight into you know, what you can reach. And I will also talk about some of the limitations that you have, have to be careful of. So uh, let me show you how this works. And it's actually fairly simple to get a terrain profile, but it's not one of those things that everybody is familiar with in Google Earth. So what I'm going to do is profile the terrain between my house and the uh, Mount Vernon repeater. Uh, which is in Alexandria, and it's atop the uh, Washington Masonic Memorial in Alexandria. Okay, and it turns out to be an interesting case. All right, so I have to find my house somehow. Uh, Doug, since this is a terrain system, does it depend on the 3D imaging? No. Um, you know, when I did this at home, it looked fine, so. Um, <laughs> I presume that it is as bad on the screen, on your screen, as yes. on the projection? Yes. Well, you can see the uh, menus and such are perfect. Yeah. 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 And I understand you can't see this entirely well, but let me explain what I'm going to do. So I've uh, located my house, and uh, what I want to do is um, try to zoom in. On my house and locate uh, my antenna and this is this is my house here and the antennas on the chimney I'm actually going to just get rid of the marker that they provided and I'm going to go up to the push pin and um, the way this push pin works is that you need to place the push pin where you want it which is, in my case, on my chimney. Um, and after you've, you're happy with it, then you go over here and you give it a name. So I will call it AK4AO. When you put it on your chimney, is it actually 40 feet up? Or? Well, that's actually one of the limitations of Google Earth because the terrain profile you're going to get is ground level. Yeah. Okay. 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 So that's. Um, oops. Where did my Where did my marker go? It went back down below. <laughs> Maybe you didn't click OK after that. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. yeah, you didn't click okay. yeah. Um, yeah I you might have okay. missed the OK. Let me try it again. Now, I'm going to do the same thing with the MVARC uh, repeater. And for that repeater, I happen to have GPS coordinates. Okay, and the coordinates that I have are in degrees, minutes, and seconds. So you can type them uh, degrees and a space. Let me focus back here. Degrees, minutes, seconds, third, let's see, 38, 48, 27.32 north, and 77, 03, all right, and so we'll go ahead and search that. Yeah. Um, for the sake of this type of the class, could I ask you to move over that way a little bit? It okay, looks like sorry a, about that. No, I mean, move the table over. It looks like a table. All right, is that better? Yes, mm -hmm. thank you. Well, okay, that's thanks for letting me know. for me, John, but that's okay. Okay, now, um, <laughs> I've 
you know, got the um, marker and it's in about the right place. So the next thing I'm going to do is create a path in Google Earth between the two locations. And to do that, I'm going to, probably the easiest way is to zoom out so that you can see both of them. So let me see if I can get that to happen. Yeah, that might actually work better. Okay. And we'll settle for that uh, for now. And then the way you create a path is to go up here to this icon, this is the path icon, and same kind of deal here. Now, uh, you can do a path various ways. You can drag along the route, but we're interested in point to point. So what I'm going to do is click on the beginning point and then go over and click on the end point and I'm going to uh, finish it up by naming the path. So let me call this AK4AO hyphen MBARC. Let you help me remember what it is. I'll say OK. All right. So now I've got, I've just created the path and I've got it highlighted over here in the places. Now there are two ways to get into the elevation profile. Uh, one way is to right click this and click show elevation profile. Mm -hmm. And the other way is to go up to edit when you've got it highlighted. All right, and gee, even this is going to give me this 3D business. But um, anyway, what this does is show me the elevation profile between my house over here and it's, it's hard to read, but it says that's 263 feet. And then over here, uh, we have uh, the Mount Vernon reflector, which is 117 feet. Okay, so am I gonna be able to reach that repeater? Depends on what band you're on. On two meters? <laughs> probably <laughs> not. Well, if you just looked at this, you would say probably not, but what did we just say about what Google Earth is telling you? Ground level. It's ground level. All right. And the uh, MBARC antenna is on the top of that memorial. That's 300 feet up. And on my side, it's, you know, it's on my chimney. So give that, say, 20 feet. So if you add 20 feet here and you add 300 feet here, uh, I can work it from a, my front yard with an HT. So what's the reading right there? So Well, then you wouldn't be the adding 20 power. feet on your side. Uh, well, I'm going to go up a little bit here, and I'm going to go up even more here. You see? Uh -huh. So both of those elevations are helping me overcome this hill that's right here. And you can't get around a little bit. Well, that's interesting. So if you actually move that slider to the top part, it'll show you on the map where that is. Yes, so it will show you uh, where along the path. Now, and the elevation? Yes, it does indicate the elevation. So right here is 392 feet. Okay. Now, another thing that I, I find interesting to do is say, okay, well, where is that really? Now, there is, you can't see it well on here. If we could get out of this 3D mode, there's a red arrow that follows the path and indicates. We can see it moving on that line. 
Yeah, you can see it on there. Um, but yeah, when I move out of the out of here, it goes away. But what you can do is sort of highlight uh, the peak area like that, and then it will color the path. And again, that's not easy to see here. Ah. And then you can zoom in and uh, tell somebody to get out of the way, right? And you know, see where it is. And the again, the highlight is not working the way I want because of the dark section of the path, though. Um, but anyway, if uh, if you do this under better circumstances, uh, that turns out to be pretty close to the uh, intersection of Gallows Road and Columbia Pike, and there is a big hill up there that I go up every time, you know, I'm, I'm doing that way. So that helped me understand, you know, where that terrain feature actually was. Okay, so that's... how much TNT would it take to lower that? <laughs> <laughs> Is, does Google Maps have like a topo map view a little simpler, like you might see in some of the other mapping applications too? Uh, I don't Google know. Maps of a, does. I don't know of, Earth. A, Earth. of a topo view in Google Earth, uh, but I'm not an expert on Google Earth. Okay, so that was uh, that was an interesting case. To no, look that doesn't out. have any uh, propagation a tool that you can attach no. to it. Uh, now, if you're interested in that, there is a um, program designed for radio frequency engineers called SPLAT uh, that runs on Linux and it wants to know your GPS coordinates and your antenna height and your polarization and so on. And it's going to give you um, some good information for a radio engineer, but it's going to require a learning curve to understand its output. Does it work on your computer? Um, well, Splat does not run on Windows, but uh, there are websites that are open to the public that run it. So, in fact, Johns Hopkins has uh, uh, a URL that you can run it. You can get to the web, you can do it. Okay, now, not all uh, versions of Google Earth have the uh, terrain profile, by the way. I'm told by somebody who should know that the iPad version does not. Uh, I'm using the desktop version here. And the, if you have pro version of Google Earth, which you can get right now for free, you can also get uh, rapid vision analysis. So if you place point on the map, you say X was A to R, and it uh, pulls have the resolution of DPM, and then uh, gives you uh, information about the shape. So what, what is the optical? Uh, Concentric circles, perhaps in a circle. No, it's it's more like uh, camera view. Shadow. Oh, like the, oh, shadow. Like, yeah. like, like the sh uh, shine the light right. from this point and uh, where's the shadow? Oh, that's more or less this. Uh, this mm -hmm. uh, that's very you, useful. You can get the license for the uh, proper. Oh, interesting. Uh, I wanted to show you one more path, and uh, this is the path between. Uh, K6BFA and the Bluemont repeater. All right. So, um, let's see. Is that anywhere near Mount Weather? It is. Yes. It is. Um, and there's more than one source for the coordinates on the web, and they don't agree, so <laughs> we did our best. It's a mystery. Okay, so K6BFA is over on the left, and the Bluemont repeater is over on the right. How's it look? Good. Great. <laughs> Looks great, right? Pete, can you work that repeater? He's gone. Answer? Yes, you can. Well, I can't. I can do it. 
Well, um, he, he told me that he's having trouble working that repeater. Okay. Okay. But you go to his house, and I asked him where his two meter antenna was, okay, on the roof. He's surrounded by tall trees. Okay, leaves matter. For two, two meters. For two meters and VHF frequencies in general. Um, you know, my own observation of that, well, one of them occurred uh, when I was using a TV antenna. I also live in a neighborhood with tall trees. So the next month they'll hit it? Um, <laughs> well, from, from my house, I have repeaters that I can work in the winter, but not in the summer. Okay. But also, uh, when I was using a TV antenna on the roof, it was fine unless the wind blew. And then the, the vegetation was moving around, it was multipathing like crazy and breaking up the picture. Uh, so there's no doubt in my mind that vegetation matters. And that's all I have.